Ladies and gentlemen, my guest on Chair Shots to the Cranium Interviews is a popular and accomplished woman in professional wrestling. She's wrestled in Mexico for AAA and Lucha Underground. She's the current Impact Wrestling Knockouts Champion, and she's about to make her debut with a very popular independent wrestling company, Universal Championship Wrestling. I'm pleased to welcome the amazing Taya Valkyrie. Taya, how are you today? Good. Thank you for having me. Excited to be heading out to uh, Atlanta soon. Yeah, I'm excited to see you. So let's talk. <laughs> let's talk a little bit about the prequel to Taya Valkyrie. When did you first notice professional wrestling, and what triggered your interest in making a career out of it? Um, I mean, I, I knew I watched professional wrestling, you know, off and on growing up, just because of like my friends who had big brothers or you know stuff like that. But it wasn't until I was in high school that I was I started really watching it and and noticing the women wrestlers and uh, really seeing it for what it was and being inspired by it. I mean, I had, growing up, I was picked on a lot, so um, I dealt with a lot of bullying. So for me, when I watched the Divas on TV, I was just, I always visioned them as people that I thought I could never be like, and they inspired me to, you know, continue moving forward with my life and, and things like that in many different ways. So I really wanted... You know, I wanted to be like that, and that ultimately led me to become a professional wrestler. How did the connection form to start your training with Lance Storm? Um, well, I, first of all, I didn't really know how to get into wrestling, so when I made the decision um, that I wanted to try and pursue it, I got into fitness competition because, you know, the divas of, such as Trish Stratus, Victoria, and Tori, and a few others, like, had all had all come from fitness backgrounds and fitness modeling so in my brain I was like okay well if I don't know where to go to school because at this time you know wrestling wasn't like it is now um I you know I said okay then maybe this is my way of getting into wrestling so I started pursuing fitness competition I became a multi-provincial um champion which is in Canada like a state champion um and then I became a national champion um in fitness hall division and those, those um, competitions ultimately led me to for being first scouted by WWE and then them directing me in the direction of meeting Lance Storm and going to his school. So it kind of all came full circle and everything that I kind of, you know, projected, you know, I, I believe in positive projection and, and really going after everything 100%, right. it all ended up kind of coming true. So it worked out. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So, like I mentioned in my opening statement, you recently agreed to appear at Universal Championship Wrestling Super Brawl. That's on February the 2nd. This show will be taped for Fight TV. You're scheduled to face Ambro O'Neill and Maddie Max in a triple threat match. What are your thoughts on this Max and match, and do you have any experience with these ladies in the ring? Um, I actually have never, I've never wrestled either Ambro O'Neill nor Maddie Max. I know who both of them are. I know Ambro O'Neill has been a wrestler for a very long time and she's a you know very well known she's had a huge career so i'm very prepared for that maddie max i know is a little bit of a newer wrestler but i mean she probably has some tricks up her sleeve just like everybody does so i'm just coming as prepared as i always do and i you know i'm going to lay it all out there so i can become the number one contender for the ucw women's title who is currently held by jazz so right. hopefully everything goes my way on on february 2nd I hope that everyone joins us. The doors are at 7, the bell is at 7.30, and it's a stacked card for people like Mo Muertes, Kid Cash, PJ Black, myself, um, and more. So, you know, come on down and check it out. It'll be my first time wrestling with UCW, and I'm excited. i tell you what, it, like you mentioned, it is a very stacked card, and uh, you got to be there. It's, it's going to be outstanding. Yeah, I haven't wrestled in Atlanta in a very long time, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting back there. Well, let's talk a little bit about women's wrestling. I think it's bigger than it's ever been, obviously. What's your opinion of the current state of women's wrestling and its future? Oh, my gosh. Um, it's seriously, like, evolves. Like, every six months, it just keeps evolving and evolving and becoming stronger and more interesting. Um, and I think it's an amazing time to be a professional wrestler, not only a women wrestler, um, because there's just so many outlets for us to perform, so many different companies, the way people think about a woman wrestler is so different than it was even five years ago. We're allowed to be working multi-company. You know, I work for Lucha Underground, but I also work for Impact, and I also am able to work for companies like UCW and travel around and kind of have my big independent circuit, which I think is so important when it comes to my fans. Um, so it's a very interesting time, and it's crazy and fun and creative, and there's just so many opportunities for everybody. Um, and I'm just really happy to be part of it. 
I'm happy that like Lucha Libre has gained so much more momentum over the last few years as well. As far as obviously since that is like where my, my priority of my career was in Mexico. So being a luchadora, I'm just super proud that everyone's experiencing that as well. So it's um you know it's, it's only going up from here, and right now we're at a pretty good. We're going pretty well into 2019. I mean, it's only the second week. <laughs> <laughs> of the year and already yeah. so many things have happened so um i'm just really looking for i haven't felt this motivated in a long time and so inspired by the women i've been able to wrestle with and the knockouts and the impact locker room and everybody right now that's that's wrestling around the world so it's a really great time so in 2011 it appeared you may have landed a role with wwe but unfortunately that did not work out at that time tell me about that experience and how that seemed to motivate you to prove them wrong yeah, I was, I was signed, I was offered a contract, and then they went back on their decision a few weeks later, which obviously at that time was heartbreaking. Sure, sure. Like being handled, handed your dream and then it gets taken away. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anybody should ever have to go through that. I mean, at the time, I was like, I wish they never even said anything, you know? Um, but at the same time, it really did motivate me because I have never been a person to be a pushover. I've always really gone after what I want, and I knew I wanted to be a wrestler. And it didn't matter that the biggest company in the world was telling me they, they didn't want me. I was like, I'm going to prove them wrong, and I'm going to show them that I am worthy of, of success in this business. And um, I got in contact with Conan, and, and that's how I ended up working in Mexico. And as hard as those years were for me, and personally, professionally, um, it, it is what it is, and it, it is what it brought me to where I am today. As you know, a star of Lucha Underground, I am now Impact Knockout Champion. Um, it brought me my husband. It brought me so many wonderful opportunities, and so I would never take that back. I mean, I don't want every. I would never wish that feeling of being rejected rejected like that upon anybody. But honestly, at the end of the day, it did work out for me, and um, I mean, it's just it's crazy when I think back. On it. Yeah, no doubt about it. That I was. But I mean, I think sometimes, you know, the, the, the saying, it's not how many times you fall down, it's how many times you get back up. So I, I think I did that. No question about it. And, uh, you know, things happen for a reason, that old saying, you know, and uh, like you mentioned, everything works out and you wouldn't have the experiences that you have now. Exactly. And I think I'm a better wrestler for it. And if one day I make it to WWE, cool. If I don't, totally cool as well because there's so many other opportunities out there right now that is not the only way to make a living professional in professional wrestling um you know especially now with impact and all these independent companies that are you know have sold out shows every week every month everywhere and and the you know these new companies that are starting like aew and like there's just so much hype and cool and cool energy around professional wrestling now so it's a very good time to be in this industry oh no doubt about it i agree 100 percent. so your career took a huge step in 2012 and you kind of touched on this already a little bit when you just you decided to leave canada you moved to mexico where you competed with triple a how did your time with triple a improve your career and your wrestling style um well, i completely had to learn everything all over again because obviously we should be very style the, the traditional style which they do in AAA is uh, completely different than what right. <laughs> than what I had learned obviously at Landstorm School, but that was okay. Like it was just a complete learning curve for me. Um, it was hard. It was very very hard because I didn't speak the language. I was being told all the time that I wasn't. I didn't fit in. I looked different, so I was judged all the time. But uh, once again, stubborn me I was like, you know what? Screw you. Sorry. Oops. Come on, allowed to say that. No, um, you're fine. I, <laughs> um, I just. You know, I just, I want what I want, and I know I'm, I'm deserving, and I worked my butt off for it, so I did that, and I learned the language, I learned the style, I, I was told multiple times I would never be the women's champion in AAA by several people, people in the office, wrestlers, fans, everybody, but guess what, I became a two-time Reina de Reina's champion, I became the first non-Mexican-born woman to ever do so, and also being the longest reigning with 940-something days as champion. Yeah, that's very so, impressive. I think I, I thrive when people tell me no, so I think that I just, I don't know, I just, I'm so thankful for my time at AAA, we've had our ups and downs, um, you know, dealing with lots of different things, but... Once again, things are coming full circle, like the fact that Impact filmed in Mexico this past weekend, and I was able to, you know, defend my title in front of people that, you know, have watched me grow. Like, I grew up in wrestling around the Mexican Lucha Libre audience, so it was such a cool moment for me, and I'm forever grateful and thankful for that. 
When 2016, you debuted with Lucha Underground in an intergender match with Brian Cage. Now, that match was praised by many as being very competitive and very entertaining. Do you think intergender matches should be booked more and not just the mixed tag matches where we're seeing where the women have to tag in at the same time? Um, I believe that intergender wrestling, when done properly, is 100% the same as you know a woman fighting a woman and a man fighting a man. Right. Um, I believe that Brian and I did an excellent job. He's one of the best wrestlers in the world right now on in that match. Um, it was one of the, it was the first time Brian Cage had wrestled a woman. Um, you know, I'm the OG of that stuff. So I, <laughs> I was so excited to be part of that. And also in Lucha Libre, men wrestle women all the time. Right. So for me, it wasn't even a shocking, I, like when they brought, they said, Oh, you're going to wrestle Brian. I was like, okay. Because for the last four years, that's what I've been doing. So I didn't even think anything of it when I was actually in that moment. But once it aired and the reactions that I've gotten still now, like years later, um, it's crazy, but awesome. And that was a hard match. It was, you know, we both bought, brought it. But, you know, we, he was just a, such a good partner for me to have in that situation. Yeah, it was hard hitting and everything. But I feel like we, we told a, the story properly. And uh, I'm very excited that people still have are interested in it. Yeah, it was a great match. Uh, and, uh, and everybody I've ever spoken to about it said the same thing. So definitely uh, definitely noteworthy in the world of professional wrestling, no doubt about it. Yeah, and I'd like a rematch at some point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, you recently won, as everyone knows, you recently won the Impact Wrestling Knockouts Championship. Congratulations on that, by the way. By Thank def- you. By defeating Tessa Blanchard. Tell me about that experience in your career so far uh, with Impact. Um, my career with Impact has been really, really great. It, it, last year was a little bit difficult for me because there was a lot of personal things going on. Um, but I, we've moved past that, and I'm so happy with the way my character is now. I think the feud that I've had with Tessa Blanchard has been one of the most interesting and hard-hitting and innovative you know, uh, feuds that I've had at forever. Um, so I'm very happy with the way that it's gone and the way we've both just brought it every single time and creatively and just you know, every time we set out to have match of the night, there was never a moment where we were like, oh, I don't know. You know, it was always just 100% going for it, trying different things, bumping crazy stuff. Like, it was just, we just really want, want people to think about, they want people to think about the Tessa and Taya feud. They don't think that was the best women's match. They think that was the best wrestling match. Right. And I think we both have that state of mind. And, I, you know, there's still some stuff that hasn't aired yet that I'm so excited for everybody to see. Um, but she she is an excellent competitor. And uh, I can't wait to see what this year brings for both of us. So I'm excited to continue with that and, and move forward. Now, as many fans know, you're married to the current Impact World Champion, Johnny Impact. Is it possible that we could see a champion versus champion match in the Impact Ring very soon? Oh my gosh, I would wrestle him any day of the week. We actually <laughs> <laughs> we actually had a I, we wrestled each other once for a charity event in LA. It was so much fun. You guys can check that out actually on my I have a video about it on my YouTube channel where I look at TV W E R A T V um, and check that out. It was super fun. I'd absolutely love to do that. I think that would be great. Um, if anybody watched season four of Lucha Underground, they know that at the end of season four, um, Taya Mundo turned into a god and went after her husband. So who knows what could happen in season five if we do season five. So there's, I would absolutely love to be able to wrestle Johnny Impact uh, at some point. That would be a first. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> So, how's your experience been so far traveling the road with your husband, um, husband and wife, and now you're doing it with championship belt sitting in the back seat? Um, it's been amazing because honestly, he's like my number one supporter. Obviously, he's like seen me go through so much stuff when it comes to professional wrestling and the ups and downs and all the hard work and sacrifices that have gone into it, and. Um, you know, it's just a really fun time because now we get to share in this kind of moment on impact together. Although, and it's very different than how we were um, on Lucha Underground. So it's, it's a very exciting time. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I'm just really excited for this next year and see what, what happens with both of us on impact and in all different projects that we have going on. Uh, it's a good time. <laughs> now, out of all the matches that you've had so far, is there one match that stands out as your best or your most favorite? I don't know. I am. I feel like every single time 
my wrestle, I'm trying to improve. So someone might talk about it. Like for me, I think about these special matches that, you know, things that have happened. Like, for example, let me think. Like my street fight versus Ayaka, Ayako Hamada, which was like two years ago for the Reina de Reina's championship was street fight, was one of my favorites. Um, because it was such a special moment and it was me becoming a two-time champion. So I have like these moments in my career that I feel like are my favorites. But as far as matches or think that one match was better than the other, I think that every time I try to improve, so every time I'm like, okay, the match from last week wasn't the best one. Now this one is the best one. Right, you know? right. Because I'm constantly trying to evolve and improve and change and, you know, push the envelope for myself and strive for excellence. I'm the hardest person on myself. <laughs> I'm so critical. So I always nitpick everything. Um, so yeah, I just feel like every one of my matches that you see, I hope that you notice that I, I continually try to improve. So yeah, I don't know. I don't think I could pick a favorite of all because it, I think that changes like every week. <laughs> so is there an opponent out there that you would love to have a dream match with? Oh, I mean, there's there's so many professional wrestlers right now that are extremely talented. Right. So I, I mean, I could make a long list. I don't think there's just specifically one. Right. And there's certain people that I'm so surprised I haven't gotten to wrestle yet. For example, I've never wrestled Britt Baker. I've never wrestled Chelsea Green. And these are all people that I'm around all the time. And I, you know, I, I just would like to have those, you know, opportunities. I've never wrestled Jordan Grace. Uh, you know, I love wrestling Jessica Havoc. I have, there's so many girls that are also signed to WWE that I would love the opportunity to wrestle. Like, um, some of the girls that are in NXT, there's, there's talent everywhere. You know, I'd love to wrestle Charlotte, but we're in different companies. I'd love to wrestle, right. <laughs> wrestle Sasha or Natty or anybody, you know, like I just feel like there's so many dream matches out there that it would be hard for me to just say one. Sure. That kind of leads me in my next question. If WWE calls right now, which wrestler could be male, could be female, doesn't matter. On that roster, who would you who would you like to have a match with? If you had to book it for WrestleMania 35, you're in it. Who would it be? Nakamura. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I would. Uh, I would wrestle Nakamura. That would be a great match. Sure. That would be awesome. Him or Rey Mysterio. I mean, I love me some Rey Mysterio. So yeah, yeah, one of those two. So, for women listening to this interview who may already be in the business or thinking about entering the business, outside of getting trained by the right person, because that's very, very important, what advice would you give them on how to be successful? Um, I think that I would say, remember to not lose yourself, because this is an extremely hard business with a lot of negativity. You're going to have so much self-doubt. I mean, I've been wrestling for eight years, and I still have moments where I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Um, so I would just say, like, just really remember to love yourself. Remember that you're trying your hardest. Remember that, you know, this is a business, and it's hard work. And, you know, just be true to who you are and what you want to do and, and the wrestler you want to be, and work really hard. Um, you know, and don't, don't let people make you second-guess yourself. If this is what you want and you've worked your butt off for it, and you're doing everything in your power, and you know that in yourself, then, you know, just believe in that. Don't let other people ne negatively influence you, and just be true to yourself. That's great advice. So, this is the cheer this is the cranium shot portion of the interview. I'm going to say a name, and you give me your first reaction. It could be a word, one word answer, it could be several words, whatever comes to mind, okay? Oh my gosh, all right. All right, you ready? <laughs> yeah. All right, Jazz. Uh, tough as nails. <laughs> she is sexy star. Um, a past, a person in my past. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemary. Wicked character. NXT. Uh, game changing. Finally, Ronda Rousey. Very interesting and someone that I would like to wrestle. <laughs> that that as well would be a fantastic match. I don't know which one I'd like to see better. You and Ronda at WrestleMania 35 or you and Nakamura? Both of those would be phenomenal. Well, I guess then we have to make it a three-way. <laughs> yeah, that, absolutely. There you go. That'd solve it right there, wouldn't it? Well, yep. Taya, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy thank schedule. You. I really do appreciate your time. It's been an honor to, to speak with you. Of course, thank you guys, and don't forget to be there on February 2nd.
February 2nd, Griffin, Georgia. Buying a ticket is very, very easy. Just go to their website. It's ucwtv.com. Again, ucwtv.com. You can also follow on Universal Championship Wrestling social media at UCWTV to find out more about this fantastic independent wrestling company. And Taya, before we end the interview, where can fans find you on social media? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at the Taya Valkyrie and as well as on Facebook.com slash Taya Valkyrie. I'm always on there. I'm always tweeting and responding to fans and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. So, um... Let me entertain you. <laughs> Follow me on there. Taya, congratulations on being part of Universal Championship Wrestling and for the tremendous success you've experienced so far in your career. Again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. All right, thank you. Wrestling fans, you do not want to miss this show. Universal Championship Wrestling Super Brawl taking place on Saturday, February the 2nd in Griffin, Georgia. Buying a ticket is very, very easy. Go to their website ucwtv.com again that's ucwtv.com to purchase your ticket also make sure you follow them on social media instagram twitter facebook it's at ucwtv keep up with the latest happenings in universal championship wrestling and thank you for taking another chair shot to the cranium and i hope you enjoyed this interview with taya valkyrie